Good evening. We welcome you to our life group tonight. And tonight we're excited about this life group because it's going to be a sample of what our life groups are going to look like that will be kicking off at the end of the month. Sunday's message was on the subject of the prayer of Jabez that we find in the book of Chronicles. The main thought of the message was, God, take us where we've never been before in 2017. Sometimes when we go to places we've never been and we see things that we've never seen, it gets a little bit scary. But praise God, we never have to go alone. Let's jump right into this. First Chronicles chapter 4 verse 9 through 10. The scripture says, Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bore him in pain. Verse 10, And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed, and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me, that you would keep me from evil, and that I may not cause pain. And the scripture says, God granted him what he had requested. So the thought of the message was, God, take us where we've never been in 2017. And see, this is really what Jabez is praying here. God, take me to places that I've never been before. And again, like I mentioned earlier, sometimes that's a scary thing to do, to go where you've never been before. So we looked at this man in the Bible who made a decision to go where he had never been before. And there was a reason for that. Now let's notice who this man was. Look at verse 9. The scripture says, Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. What this simply means is that he was walking with God. Even though the rest of the world may not be walking with God, maybe his family was not walking with God, maybe his friends, his neighbors was not walking with God, but he was walking with God, which qualified him to go to God and then enabled him to get results as a result of what he prayed. Now, he did not have a great beginning. Notice what it says next. And his mother called his name Jabez because I bore him in pain. Jabez means pain. Can you imagine the problem that this had to cause him at times when he'd be walking down the road, maybe as a young person, say, here comes pain, here comes pain, and the, they would make fun of him? I've been called a pain a few times. I'm sure that you've been a pain and been called a pain a few times as well. But the thing that we notice about Jabez is this. He didn't stay where he started. That's not where he finished. Notice what his prayer is in verse 10. And Jabez called on the God of Israel. Notice his prayer. Oh, that you would bless me indeed. Jabez teaches us this, that it's nothing wrong with praying for yourself. Folk, we need to do that. We need to ask God to help us to do what he wants us to do. Nothing wrong with praying for yourself, especially when you want to be a blessing to others. Notice what he asked. Enlarge my territory. God, give me greater responsibilities. Take me beyond my present abilities. God, enable me to do what I've never been able to do before. What an awesome, awesome prayer for, for you and I to pray. He wanted his territories to be enlarged. He wanted to step out from his safe harbor, even, even if it meant going into the storms of life. As I mentioned Sunday, sometimes when we leave the safe harbor, we enter the danger zone. Here at LifeBridge, folks, if we want to do great things for God, if we want to do greater things for God and reach people and change lives, we're going to have to do what we know we cannot do. And God will enable you to do what you cannot do. God will enable you to do greater things than you've ever done in your entire life. Together, we must move out of our safe harbor into the storms of life. But God is with us. Notice what he says, verse 10, that thy hand will be with me. God, He knew that if he was going to leave the safe harbor and ask God to take him to places that had never been before, he would need God to go with him. And that's what he is saying here. What does the hand of God do for us? It strengthens us. In Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 10, the scripture says, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. And then in Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And then the hand of God will steady us. In Psalms 37, 23, it says, the steps of the good man are ordered by the Lord. And then the hand of God will shape us. In Jeremiah 18, 6, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so you are in my hand. Notice the next thing that he prays. He says, keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. Folks, this portion of the prayer is extremely important. You see, the more you do for God, the more you're going to need to pray 
God keep me from evil. Jabez knew that he was going to enter into a, some areas that was going to be very dangerous, and the devil would not be happy with what he is doing. Because, you, my friend, as your relationship with God, listen, as your relationship with God becomes closer, you're going to experience more temptations and more attacks from the devil. And notice what it says next. God granted his request. Wow. Let me ask you some questions. How many of you believe that God has a desire to bless your life? How many of you believe that God has a desire to bless your family? Do you believe that God has a strong desire to bless LifeBridge? You see, many times we don't do great things for God because we think that we can't. And we begin to make excuses. I can't do this. I can't do this because of my health. I can't do this because of my, uh, my finances. I can't do this because of my family situation. I can't do this because I'm old. What we do is we begin to play the blame game. You know what blame is? It's spelled B-L-A-M-E. Be lame. God help us to be responsible and accountable for our own behavior. Not the behavior of others, not the circumstances of life. You see, God makes it very clear that we can be overcomers for him. I know that it's sometimes more difficult than others than it is for some, but it's possible for all. No one in this life group tonight is exempt from doing greater things for God than you've ever done in your entire life. My friend, Christ didn't die for just some. He died for all. You don't have to finish the way you started. You don't have to be a pain all your life. You can begin to be a blessing. I want to con conclude by sharing with you five words that I think would motivate you. Number one is gospel. You must be born again. That's the very beginning. Number two is grace. Realize that it's because of the grace of God you can become what God wants you to be. Number three is forgiveness. Understand that you have been totally forgiven of everything that you've ever done wrong. No matter what you've done wrong, it has not exempted you from God using you today and in the future. You have not become disqualified from the from being used of God. Repent of what you've done wrong and God will use you. And then number four, vision. God, give us a greater vision. The Bible says without vision, the people perish. And then finally, faith. God, help us to believe that all things are possible, even when our faith is weak. I hope that y'all might even talk about the, the fellow that God said, do you want me to heal your son? He said, yeah. Do you believe I can heal your son? I believe, but help me with my unbelief. I think the unbelief is where many people are, even in this life group tonight. Thank you for this opportunity. I will continue to pray for you as you go through the life application questions. God bless you so much.